Hey, hello everyone. Hello YouTube. This is your Miyahu Weeps and this video is on Yeshua. Yeshua. People think his name is Jesus. It's not. I'll really quick I'll just go over that. Jesus uh originally came from the Greek. Uh previously the J was pronounced as a Y sound, so it's Jesus. Um, the S in the Greek was put on the end of it because that denoted a male name. So the Greeks called him Jesus. Um, if you took off the S, it would be Yesua. And, and the S sound, the Greeks, I don't think they had an SH sound. So they said Sua instead of Shua. So um, if you went back to the Hebrew, it would be Yeshua. Um, and the Yeshua name is actually a shortened form of the longer name Yoshua spelled Y-E-H-O-S-H-U-A, and it literally means Yiwei, how I pronounce Yiwei is rescue, Yiwei is salvation, Yiwei is uh, redemption. Um, now, I pronounce it Yiwei, it's my, the best of my understanding. I know other people pronounce it differently. I think the different pronunciations, that's not as big a deal. I think it's more important what his name actually means. He means he exists, meaning he's the self-existent one. His existence is not dependent on anyone or anything else. Everyone and everything else, is their existence is dependent on him. So, Yeshua, Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach, HaMashiach means the Anointed One, commonly translated into Messiah and translated into Greek as Christos from where we get our English Christ. Um, Yeshua, a man, a man born about 2,000 years ago. His parents were Yosef, commonly known as Joseph, and Miriam, commonly known as Mary. His two parents, human parents, he got his Davidic line, kingly line, a line from David or Dawid, um, through Yosef, whose genealogies are given in Matityahu or Matthew and Luke. Um, Luke is the legal genealogy, which is basically kind of like a stepfather, a stepfather of Yosef, and Matityahu is his um, natural, through literal birth genealogy. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not going to go into that right now, but they're both the genealogies of Yosef, um, showing that Yosef was from the kingly Davidic line. And thus, Yoshua, since Yosef is his father, Yoshua qualifies as being the king, um, the Mashiach king. Mashiach meaning anointed one. They would anoint kings and priests um, for their office. So anyways to show that they had um, the spirit or power of Yiwei. Um, and someone was asking about my dog, so there's my dog. Hey, puppy. This is what he likes to do, just hang out. He's content. So anyways, yeah, just showing my, <laughs> showing my dog. But yeah, I'm, oh man, my video. Yeah, there's my head. Okay, um, so Yeshua. Yoshua, Hamashiach, he has been my hero for a long time. Since I was in high school, he was my hero. Before I was a believer in Yah, before I was a Christian, he was my hero. He was my hero because he was true and real in the face of opposition. He was, um, and he had character. Awesome, awesome, awesome character. Um, and I loved that about him. He was true. He was not full of crap. I loved that about him, too. And he went through a torturous death to be true to himself and to be true to the one he loved, which is Father Yeah. I didn't understand this for a long time. Long part of my life, I didn't understand it. But that's what he was doing. To be true to Yah, he went through with a torturous death. He is the fulfilled image of Yiwei. Yiwei, the self-existent one. However you want to pronounce it, Yahweh, Yiwei, Yehovah, Yehovah. Um, however you want to pronounce it, he is the Almighty, the Creator. And Yoshua is his image. Um, when you look at Yoshua and you see 
his goodness and his kindness and his strength of character and his not giving into temptation and his not giving in to being um, lower. He was, he was being true to his father, even in the face of torturous death. All of those things illustrate that he is the image of Yue. You want to see what Yue looks like? You look at Yeshua, and you see who he was as a person. We don't know exactly what Yeshua looked like. Um, I've heard that he may not have been the most attractive. I think there's evidence that he may have been short. We don't really know. We don't know what color his hair was. We don't know what color his eyes were, or are, I should say, because he is alive. Um, and I'll go into that in a moment. But he is Mashiach ben Yosef, um, the Messiah, anointed one, son of Joseph, Yosef, um, and otherwise known as like the suffering servant Messiah in Judaism, I believe. He is also Hamashiach ben David. Now, he is not fulfilling. He, the first time he came, he was fulfilling the role of Mashiach ben Yosef, being the suffering servant. When he returns, because he will return. Not too long from now, I don't know exactly when, but not too long from now, he will be fulfilling the role of Hamashiach ben Dawid, which, which means the anointed one, son of David, or Dawid, the king of the Yehudim. He will not be coming back as a suffering servant. He will be coming back as ruler, and he will be doing away with everything which is contrary to Yue. And Yue is love, so he will be doing away with everything that which is contrary to love. Everything which is contrary to love will be, it's going to end. It is going to end. Soon, I hope. Um, he is also Hanetzer, which means the branch. You know when it's called, um, when it says in scripture, he will be called a Nazarene? I think what it's really saying is he will be called a Netzer from the town of Neserot. That's what uh, Nazareth, Neserot. Um, meaning the branches. That's the name of the town, and it's a town of, um, from my understanding, it's a town of Davidic descendants, descendants from da Dawid or David, and Mashiach will be called Hanetzer, the branch. It's it's a term that's mentioned like maybe five times in Scripture in the Tanakh Old Testament, I believe. Um, but yeah, he'll be called the branch. He'll also be called Tzemach Tzedakah, which means the upright branch. He is the son of man or son of Adam because Adam, the name Adam, Adam means man. So he is the son of Adam. You know where um, Yiwei tells Adam and Hawa that right after they uh, violate Yiwei's instructions and Yiwei comes and he says, what's going on? I mean, I'm paraphrasing. Um, he says, what's going on? And, and Hawa says, well, no, Adam says, um, she, 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 she gave me the fruit and I ate it. Um, and so he talks to her and she says, well, the, the serpent, he, he deceived me and I ate. Um, and he says, well, okay, since, since you did this, um, since the three of you did this, these things are going to happen. Cause and effect. You did this, this is going to happen. And then he says, don't be too distressed. I mean, I'm paraphrasing for us. Don't be too distressed. I'm sending you a deliverer, a redeemer. Someone someone from yourself, you are going to be the ones that are going to make this situation right. Someone that's going to come from your bodies. He's going to come from you. See, I'm loving and kind and good. Your redemption is going to come from you. You're going to be the cause of your redemption. Now, of course, he's the one that's, you know, Yah's the one that's going to make it take effect. But their own redemption is going to spring from their bodies. Now, of course, it's going to take a long, 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 long time. But it's going to happen. And Yoshua is the fulfillment of that. He is the son of Adam. He is the fulfillment of the promised redemption. He is the heir of Adam and Hawa. He's the heir of humanity. Um, he's the son of, of Yiwei. In uh, Matityahu 5.9, Luke 20.36, and Romans 1.4. I'll talk about this. Um, he's the living Torah. Um he came to teach the Torah. When it says he didn't come to destroy the Torah, but to fulfill it, those were idioms, meaning he didn't come to, to mis teach it and misrepresent it. He came to teach it accurately and correctly. He came to teach Torah accurately and correctly, what Torah really means. Um, 
And that's why he's called the living Torah. He lived Torah out. If somebody wanted to see what the Torah was all about, they could look at him and see, oh, that's how you're supposed to live the Torah. That's how you're supposed to do the Torah. You see Yoshua. That's what it's all about. He's Hanabi of Yahweh. Um, Hanabi commonly gets uh, called the prophet, um, but it just means the one who pours forth. He's the spokesman of Yahweh. Um, and you know, in, uh, in the Tanakh, I can't remember exactly where, but it says that um, Moshe is talking, Moses, and he says, uh, someone, Yah is going to send someone like me, a prophet like me, who you have to listen to. You have to listen to him. He's going to send someone like me. You have to listen to him. Yoshua is the one he was talking about. Um, he's a servant of Yahweh. Um, he's the Kohen Hagadol, which means the high priest, according to Melchizedek. Um, you know, in, in Hebrews, I believe it, it talks about he's the high priest, according to Melchizedek. He's the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest. Um, the Levitical priesthood has been superseded by the Melchizedek priesthood, and he is the high priest. He's the bread of life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I believe that um, when he said these things, he's speaking on behalf of Yah, Yahweh. So when he says these things, that's actually Yahweh being the way, the truth, and the life. But Yahweh is identifying himself with Yoshua, and Yoshua is identifying himself with Yahweh. So they're two separate beings, but they're identifying with each other. Um, similar to when two people are married, um, they're no longer just completely independent of each other. They're united. They're united. Um, um, Jim and Tammy Smith. I don't know these people actually. I'm sure they exist, but I don't know who they are or anything. I'm just making up the names. But Jim and Tammy Smith. Well, who's the Smiths? Well, they're united, Jim and Tammy. Yeah, you can have one without the other, but they don't want to have one without, you know, if it's a healthy marriage, they don't want to have one without the other. They're united. They're, they're, the two become one. So anyways, it's the same thing with Yoshua and Yue. Um, Yue identifies himself, and I'll get into that in a minute, but no, I think I'll do it already. The name Yue um, is composed of four letters. It's the yod he wah -He. It's a picture of um, an arm with, you know, an arm and a tent peg. No, no, no. An arm and then a person whose arms are extended basically going, look at that. And a tent peg and then another picture of a person going, look at that. So it's saying, look at the arm or hand or wrist. Look at the nail or tent peg. So look at the nailed wrist. So the name Yiwei, the name of the creator is pointing to his son. He's directing people's attention to his son. He's saying, look at the nailed hand. That's what I want you to be looking at. I'm, I'm the ultimate, the ultimate of all things, says, look at him. That's where I want your attention to. And the name Yeshua means Yahweh is rescue. So the father's all busy pointing to his son, and the son is all busy pointing to his father, saying he's rescued. He's the one I love. He's he's the one I adore. He's he's the ultimate. Oh, so good. Um He's the light of the world. He's the firstborn from the dead. Now personally, I believe that the word Janeo that um gets you must be born again. It's the word Janeo. It includes everything from conception to birth. From my understanding, that word Janeo and I believe that when he was immersed, baptized, um, that's when he was conceived by Yiwe. Because there's, there's a, um, a version of the gospel, can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but it says, one of the things that Yiwe said to him at his immersion was, you are my son, today I have fathered you. I believe that's when he was conceived. And when he died and was resurrected, that's when he was born again. Born, we're first born, you know, at the beginning of our life in this life. And then after we die, when we come to life again, that's when we're born again. That's when we're reborn into a new life. So he is the firstborn from the dead. Firstborn implies that others are going to follow, and they will. Lots and lots and lots, all humanity, billions, billions of people are all going to be born again. 
I'm very happy about that. Um, he is our older brother. It talks about in scripture that he is our brother. He's our eldest brother, our oldest brother in a way. Um, because the oldest as far as um, priority and headship and superiority. He's our big brother. That's a big brother that I don't mind having. There's other forms of big brother that I really don't like, but that's one that I would be happy with, that I am happy with. Um, he is the faithful witness, the faithful witness of Yah and Yah's Torah and Yah's way of life and Yah's instructions and Yah's character. Um, he is the ruler over the kings of the earth. I am so happy about this. He is, ult I mean, in that he's not ultimate. Yah is ultimate. But he is the ultimate human being. He's the ultimate human being. It does not get any higher than him except for Yah himself. And Yah is just ultimate, and that's all there is to it. But um, he is the word or the message of Yahweh or Yiwei. Um, he's the message of Yiwei. He's the bridegroom. He's our advocate. Um, he's the cornerstone. He's the cornerstone of our faith. He's the, the stone that under underlays our faith that you can't do without. The foundation of our faith. Um, he's the bright morning star. He is faithful. Um... He speaks, he speaks, he spoke, and he speaks, and does, and did, and does what Yiwei tells him to do. He came to do Yiwei's will. So he's not doing anything on, him, on his own. He says this, I'm not, I haven't come to do my own will, but the one who sent me. So he came to do Yiwei's will. And he's doing Yiwei's will. Because he loves Yiwei so much. Um, and over and over again, in the Brit Hadashah, what's called what they call the New New Covenant or New Testament, he is uplifted, elevated, and rightly so, because he is the cream of the crop. He is the ultimate human being. The best. The best of the best. The best of the best. The um uh first fruit of the harvest. There's a festival, there's there's a number of um Yiwei's festivals. And the first one, the very first one is Pesach, means to pass over, um, where they, they uh, slaughter a lamb. Like Yoshua was the lamb of Yiwei. They slaughter a lamb. Um, and there's there's so much more to that, but I'm not going into that right now. I just want to touch on the, the uh, first of the first fruits. Um, they slaughtered the lamb. After the lamb gets slaughtered, they have a First of the First Fruits Festival, where they take the cream of the crop. They take the very first crop, and they take the cream of the very first crop. And they present it to Yah. The very, very best. They present it to Yah. That's Yoshua. The very, very, very best. The cream of the crop. Um, and that's... That festival, I believe, is a picture of Yoshua after he was tortured to death and came back to life presenting himself before the father and the father was very 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 pleased um, he is alive do you know what that means he was tortured to death he went through the worst it brings meaning to any, all of our suffering. Any suffering that you have, it brings meaning to. Um, I wish I could think of all of the meaning off the top of my head right now, but I can't. Um, but everything you go through has meaning and purpose. Everything. Everything. Because of Yeshua. Because Yah purposed for Yeshua to be who he was. Everything you go through has purpose and meaning. Nothing is wasted. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everything, whether it's it's good and pleasant or whether it's extremely difficult, whether it's horrible, horrible, has meaning and purpose. Everything gets redeemed. Everyone and everything gets redeemed. Um, and after he suffered and died and tortured to death, he came back to life 
So he conquered the worst. The worst of it. He conquered death and he conquered the most horribleness. And he is alive. Now he is alive. He's gone beyond just the earthly human existence. He's still human, but he's not just the earthly, fleshly human existence. He's gone to the next stage, I guess you could say. The next way for us to exist. He was able to appear and disappear out of rooms. And he was still, he, he was like, touch me and see, I'm real. I'm human. Flesh and blood. I've got flesh and blood. But then how does he appear and disappear out of rooms without using a door? Personally, my theory is that um, just like now, our minds are dependent on our bodies. If your body dies, there goes your mind. I believe then it's going to be that our bodies will be dependent on our minds, that your mind is able to do and control your body. But, so he's, he's alive. Um, and he has been alive, and he will never die. It's impossible for him to die now because he has conquered death, and that is what we are heading towards. We will die. All of us will die, but we will conquer death because of, because of Yah, because of him, and ultimately because of Yah, because Yah purposed for him to be the way he was and to be the way he is and to do what he did and to do what he does. Yah purposed all of it because he loves us passionately loves us passionately loves us so yeah yoshua is the ultimate human being he he was tempted which shows that he had to have been a human being to be able to be tempted and he overcame the temptation very difficult temptation but he overcame and he was true and his character held his whole life he never violated love. He never violated goodness. He's my hero. Want to be like him. Because he's it. He's where it's at. Because he points to the Father. And the Father points back to him. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So, um, Yeshua. The best of the best. The very best of the best. Very glad. Conquered death. It's where we're headed. Loving, kind. I want to be like that. I'd like to be like that. I will be like that. If I'm not already, I will. Because of him. So will you. Whoever you are. That's where you're headed. That's what's going to happen. So, Yeshua, the best of the best. Yeshua, the ultimate human being. Yeshua, my hero. Yep. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you have anything to add, um, any comments, any feedback, anything, that'd be great. I hope that you're doing very well. I hope you have a very good evening, night, morning, uh, lunch, breakfast, dinner, whenever you watch this. And I hope that you have a very good life. Uh, thank you. And au revoir, bon voyage, sayonara, ciao, arrivederci, um, uh, adios, uh, ni hao, dos viranya, slan, bye.